Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. So, uh, in this episode, I'll, well, it'll be split up into three minisodes again, and I'll be running through all the little, uh, the, the, getting all the little chests down in the, uh, down every, all three of the little holes there. So, yeah, let's get started. Blindfold on. Alright. To the left, all the way down. I'm gonna need a battle here probably before I hit the cliff side, because I'd prefer not to be going around to, uh, off my vanish status. But the thing is, uh, I'm worried if I did to take a battle on the cliff side, that'll end up uh, losing my vanish again after I cast it, so I'm just gonna run around here to like. There we go. So yeah, Strago's the only one on his controller. <laughs> Slot. And I, uh... Gave Strago the Phantom Magicite because, uh... Terra doesn't have enough MP to cast it again. So... He's the most sensible option left. Considering nobody else has the MP to cast it, except possibly Realm, but I don't think so. If the base MP differences were a little bit more, uh... Well, actually, never mind, she... Yeah, she... Rome might have enough, but I would didn't... didn't check. But Strago has 50, so he's totally good. All the way up to the top. Thankfully, there's no real shenanigans with the doors to the same extent as last time, because... All the doors are in convenient spots where I'll... run into a wall after I go through if I keep going the same direction. So I can backtrack this area the exact same way I came in, which saves some memorization. I run to the wall, go up and right, go up to the chest, then I go back down, left and down, and then leave the room. It's pretty convenient. No disaster struck. So, I'm in the clear for the moment. I've only got six more steps to take where I could get a battle on the cliff side. Not that I'm really all that worried about it. But... Might as well overthink these things, I guess. All the way down to the bottom, down, on, down onto the bridge. And I can go right and down to make it to the... Make it onto the first bit. If I just go straight to the right... I'll uh, end up on that little tiny bridge, which wastes a couple steps. Might as well do it this way. Going left next, not that it probably matters. Convenient. I was probably already pretty much there anyway. Going left and down makes those bridge portions less memorize-y. All the way to the top. Now I exit the cave side, get my item, one, two, three, back in the cave. Now out of convenience, I can go all the way down and all the way right three times. One nice thing about this segment, uh, besides the fact that it's really just three short mini segments that are all pretty easy to begin with, is that I get feedback very often, because I'm opening chests I think that was the second one. And I'm also con jumping off bridges and stuff, breaking holes in the ground like a vandal or something, all the way up to the top. I'm hoping I didn't accidentally go down and right four times, because that would be bad. That doesn't really tell me anything, but... but side attack still saves some time. Alright, now where I think I am, I'm on the, like, a little stretch outside the, like, jutting off the edge. Sort of like a balcony. It's a good place for a picnic, I guess, if you were to go picnicking in a cave full of monsters. It's a pretty good place for a picnic, because 
you get like all sorts of excitement while you're there and stuff like that. You don't have to pay for the entertainment. I mean, I guess you wouldn't be paying much for entertainment at a picnic anyway, but that's besides the point. It's making it down, pretty much just gotta go into this U shape that I've gotta get used to, because I'm gonna be doing it again in the next segment after having come through this room twice already. And of course this time too. But yeah, a room without battles and uh, uncomplicated is about as nice as it gets in the middle of a dungeon, so I can't really complain. There's certainly worse rooms that I could go through three times. All the way to the right. Doesn't seem like I got another battle here. So, left and up. There we go. Yeah, super easy. But that's just part one. Of course, the other parts aren't going to be any more difficult. See you soon in like two seconds. Well, after a whole 30 seconds of preparation, I think we're ready to go, probably. So, left, down, and I'll battle right away this time. I'm probably only going to get like one or two battles this segment. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it were possible to make it through this segment without getting any battles whatsoever. But clearly it did not happen this time. I, it really wouldn't happen unless I get on a really long streak. One battle is certainly doable though, because I got that in my test run. All the way down to here. All the way right. Both holes are both of these two holes are kind of placed so that I can get to them by going up and one of right or left from the wall. There we go, into the hole. So yeah, I head right, and I know there's a U shape here, so I just got to follow the U. I'm following you, I'm gonna stalk you. Whoever you are, I'm gonna stalk you back to your house and, like, take pictures or something. Be gener just generally creepy. Walking right out this door puts me right next to the chest, which is just very, very convenient. They certainly weren't organizing this dungeon to troll me, I, I can tell you that much. It's like one part that is really actually m not set up very nicely. Which is surprising because Mount Colts was not nearly as nice. Why'd I hold up there for so long? There's no way. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was only one step, but wasn't thinking. Can't hurt me. Nya, 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 nya. Why are the enemies even attacking anyway? Shouldn't be able to see anything at all, really. I guess maybe they can smell me or something. I presume Vanish makes attacks actually go through you, rather than just obscuring the enemies. Probably just overthinking this anyway. This is a stupid train of thought. Alright, I'm not getting any more battles. I'm probably in the safety room. So all the way to the left. All the way to the top. Should be the last time I have to do this. Next time I'm going for the gold here. All the way to the right. Didn't get in another battle. Safe point.
And that's it for part number two. Alright then, so I vote we finish this segment off. Because, well, first step. There's only one step between there and the wall, so... It doesn't matter enough times to know. <laughs> So if you ever wanted to see more of these guys missing me, I believe you've gotten your wish. Down the staircase. I was about to comment on the fact that I don't have any spots where I count steps in this uh, segment to help me sync the audio up but that's not such a big deal now that I'm using a different recorder that uh, can record both my voice and the game audio at the same time so hopefully less issues with that I think I'm going right on the next step not that it really matters He wants to bet that it's Drago slowing me down. Should really do some exercise. Jeez. Oh, it's not like he's going to fight the god of magic or anything. I right, probably made it. One step left, one step up into the doorway. The up and right gets me across the bridge, but it doesn't bring me into the doorway, which is actually pretty handy here, because if I went through the doorway with that, it would probably end up being a bad decision to do it in the first place. It's all the way down, but I take one step back up, so that I can get to the... get past this spot without just walking off the cliff or something. Yeah, back to... This should be the last encounter I get. I would be surprised if I got another one. Given this place is uh, not, seemingly not all that high encounter rate. So now I just walk up into the doorway. And I'm pretty much there. So yeah, it should be enough. I'm not sure which side of the doorway I'm on, but I can do another one of those tricks I pulled earlier on the mountainside. One step left, one step up. Now, uh, do that again. Now, if I was outside the doorway, I walked left. The doorway is two spaces wide, so I uh, walked back into the door, and then I put, went left and up to get myself here. And if I was inside the doorway, I just went left and up to get here, and then immediately ran into the wall like an idiot but I'm sure my characters have gotten enough concussions at this point that they're starting to gain some sort of resistance to the concussions so I'm probably okay in that regard music fading out that's a good sign the bad thing is that now we've got another one of those really long cutscenes to go through and there's a chance of dying after it so that's not good Thankfully, there's almost no more navigation to do, because uh, the final cutscene after Kefka actually takes me straight out to the overworld, which is very kind of them. Because that means all I've got is two steps right and then up to see Kefka. It's all the navigation I've left for this segment, but Kefka actually can kill Leo. He has at least some chance of doing it anyway. If I get bad luck, because Fire 3 almost takes out Leo's entire HP, and I don't want to heal after every single attack he does. That does any damage after all. The physical attacks don't do anything. I'll heal after Bio. Bio's really annoying, because I have to potion and then use an antidote. Fire 3 is obviously the most actually dangerous, though. If he just hits me with Bolt, I'll leave it for the better or worse. Hopefully he just uses the attacks that I block or 
physical attacks that do nothing anyhow. Attacking four times with it, with the, with the offering isn't worth it. Leo's damage is very, very pitiful actually compared to his shock. I mean, it's still relatively good for uh, LLG standards, but... 320 to 350 damage with uh, just the fight command isn't too bad at this point, but... Then again, I was doing more to Ultros, and I would be doing far more if I did something crazy like a Genji Glove Strago with a double proc with rods that are super effective. That would have actually done more like uh, probably 500 plus 1800 is about 2300 damage, I think. But then again, I would have had one less earring, so it would have been less than that. Even still, it makes Leo look like a turd. So maybe it's not that great. Crystal Sword's pretty much one of those, uh, like, uninteresting viable swords that doesn't do anything of note. Yeah, I could pretty much just ignore that anyway. But yeah, shock hits for around 800 damage, which is actually pretty decent. Alright, they're burning down the village, so we're getting close to the end of this cutscene getting to the point where I can hopefully find out whether I win or lose. Oh, gotta kill some espers first. Hurry it up, Kefka, just... Alright, so one more explosion noise as Leo gets toasted, but not like that does anything anyway. It didn't even do a single point of damage. What is this? Alright, then here we go. The only part of this segment worth noting. And ironically, in the Brave New World segment, it'll be the part of the segment least worth noting. Alright. Gotta be careful. I'll wait till he goes. That did nothing. I'm only gonna shock once every single time he does something, because... If I go twice, I could get myself killed pretty easily. Chances are he, pretty much every time he uh, attacks, he's pretty much right at that awkward moment where if I queue up an attack, I won't know that he's about to attack, but he, I'll, he'll go off before me, so. Uh, I don't know how much damage that does. So two down to the potions. Better just play it safe with the drain. Well, that's good. Especially if that was bio, because... or fire three, both are tedious pains in the butt. Fire 3 wouldn't be that bad, because I'd just have to heal once. I'm prepared for it right now, but... Yeah, I'm really hoping Fire 3 cannot kill me after a bolt. You know, maybe I could just heal anyway. I don't think it's really much of a big deal. This fight isn't that long. I figured I might as well cue the command in right away there, because I'm not going to mess up by healing for a bit. 
Alright, wait for him to go. He's casting a lot of spells, which would be bad except for the Leo the fact that Leo's just like, nope, no cell. Maybe I just missed an opportunity to make a Chuck Testa joke or something. Not that anyone wanted to hear a Chuck Testa joke, I bet, but... Is that it? Or is there like one more? Well, definitely one more. I think I could probably take him out in one, but... I'm not gonna be careless. But I will just leave the poison there. Probably won't have time to build. Well, he blocked whatever that was. Yeah, I figured as much. But it never hurts to be cautious. Unless there's inherent risks to being cautious, but then it's not so much being cautious, I suppose, as really just being stupid and not playing very well. Like, I mean, if, it, if you have to kill the boss quickly or something, playing it quote-unquote cautious isn't cautious at all. Leo, of course, wasn't playing it cautious enough. He should have just laid dead after he got fried. Probably would have ended up living and joining my team and kicking some serious tail. But no. But then there would always be the problem of uh, not having enough room on the shop layouts, so... You know, it's a trade-off. And now, speaking of not playing it very cautious... It's time for a rampage that's pretty much just... giving Kefka more power. So yeah, at this point I'm pretty much just waiting for the cutscene to end so that I can save. You know, to be honest, I could probably do the next cutscene too. I think I start just a couple uh, spaces down from the airship. Probably still got my vanish, not that I'm likely to die on the way to the airship two steps up or so. Even if I didn't have vanish on. I mean, unless I got a back attack or something, that would kind of suck, but, hey, whatever. Some of the longest events occurred during this point in the game where I just have to kind of mash the A button and wait. Normally I just fast forward through these, but... Unless it's changed dialogue, of course. In which case, I tend to watch them. The second thing I was like, what the? There's another fight? What's going on? But no, it's just Kefka fighting this thing for me. Man, if only I could have done that to Ifrit. I mean, not like Ifrit was exactly the hardest boss in the game, but... If only I could do that to anything that is made of magic. I could practically just go through the game. Well, I guess I kind of can. Vanish <laughs> Zone would do that. But no, I would be really, really boring.
seriously, what's the point of doing something like this? I'm just gonna vanish Exxon or vanish Doom my way out of it. Vanish plus any status effect would almost any status effect would be pretty broken anyway. So now like music change one has gone by. Your interceptor barking. Now we gotta wait for uh, next team to start playing. Right on cue. Imperial occupation or something like that. It's like the last one before we get back to the overworld. So, um, who wants, who here wants to talk about cookies? They're pretty tasty. Lots of them have chocolate chips, some are oatmeal variety. You have to make two dozen or so at a time. And they're always best when they come right out of the oven. You can also put in other things like peanuts or chocolate chips. I mean, butterscotch chips, I was going to say. I already mentioned the chocolate chips thing, I think. But, of course, uh, if you're going to put peanuts on your cookies, you better make sure you're not allergic to peanuts. This has been a PSA brought to you by, by Captain Obvious. Filling time in cutscenes since some point when he was made by some people on the internet, or probably some people before that. More rumbling noises. That's like all I ever hear. Earthquakes, rumbling, explosions, chasms, world falling apart. I figure it makes more sense to attack this cutscene on the end of this already ridiculously cutscene heavy segment. I mean, with all three segments, the gameplay to cutscene ratio ends up being a little bit better. But with just a single mini segment, it's very little gameplay So right now compared to the cutscenes. But that's going to change drastically in the near future. Because the next couple scenes are going to be pretty much all gameplay until I get to the floating continent, which will probably be a pain in the butt. Alright, here, I can take this off. Whoa, 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 don't want to go there yet. Alright, uh, let's safely not commit suicide. Ended up over here somewhere. Whatever. Alright, close my eyes for the sake of the... Uh, whatever. And so this segment has been completed. See you later.